Welcome to another FAST interview. We continue with our series of conversations with several industry professionals uh, discussing what is the future of the international film industry under the context of the COVID-19 epidemic. Today we're sitting down with Nancy Bishop, an American casting director who is based in Prague in the Czech Republic. And obviously she has a, a very interesting perspective in it, particularly when it comes to acting and the risks that actors will be exposed in the near future. I wanted to start this conversation first by asking you to step back maybe about a month before this started. What was your interpretation of where the film industry was going at that stage? Well, the first things that I noticed were that there was a problem with insurance for the films that were in pre-production and that I was about to do. The first, that was the first kind of report that I got from a producer is like, oh, our insurance just went up exponentially. And that worried me because that particular, it was an indie film. It was about to shoot in Spain, which at that time, you know, if we just, you look back at it now and we were all so stupid back then, you know, and somebody in production said, oh, they don't have any cases in Spain, you know? Wow. Well, of course <laughs> nobody knew because, because they weren't testing or whatever, you know, and then, um, there was one film that uh, I was working on in Prague and uh, you know, the Czech Republic was one of the first countries that closed its borders. It took them a long time to figure out that they couldn't do it. I mean, they were really in, the production was in denial about it, really. Even it was the day that the government said, okay, we're closing the borders. This production company was in this alternative reality where they were thinking they could still shoot somehow in the Czech Republic. At that point, I knew, I thought, this is crazy. We have actors coming in to Prague from Germany, from Russia, from Great Britain, and it's it's impossible. What do you think will be the real impact of this shutdown on the film industry? Well, you know, there, there have been many studies that have shown that in times of hardship, um, people want to be entertained even more. So what's happened is that, okay, there's nobody shooting now, except these really creative um, exceptions where people are, and I know they're doing it. People are making films in their apartments. They're doing something in the Czech Republic right now that is really cute. There's one series where they said, well, some of the actors live together that are on the series, so they can just you know keep shooting or they can do it without masks. They can... So there are all kinds of creative things happening. I mean, some friends of mine, the Prague Shakespeare Company, they're doing a Zoom production of Midsummer Night's Dream. But with those exceptions, the big, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, the big series I was working on here, um, Wheel of Time, that had to close, like all the big shoots are, they're canceled. But I think that there will be demand. Everybody's going to be done with their box sets by the time this is over, right? Everybody's consuming like crazy entertainment, right? There are going to be winners in this. There's always winners in a crisis. And I think the winners are going to be, you know, Amazon, Netflix, stuff like that. Um, I hope that the losers aren't going to be independent film. No. I do anticipate it will be better for TV than for film. How exactly have you yourself professionally have adapted to this situation? Well, we have been doing self-tapes already for years. So to be honest, that's not a huge leap. I mean, I just did a casting where a bunch of actors sent in self-tapes and and uh, I have a meeting tomorrow with the producers. So I assume that's going to be the next step. It often is that the producers will, will meet the actors via Zoom. And that's not new. That is really not new. That's been happening for many years already. Sure. Are there perspectives of uh, these projects resuming uh, anytime soon? And how are, is the production in general? Uh, well, see, in that's general the adapting? problem. I mean, all of these productions have said, you know, and I've actually had agents writing to me saying, saying, when is it going to resume? And I always just find it a really funny question. I'm like, really? You think I know? <laughs> you know, do I have a crystal ball? Um, and I understand why they're asking, of course. You know, they, they want some certainty. We all do. And we're not going to get it. The stuff that I'm working on right now, a couple of them are shooting in the Czech Republic. One was meant to shoot in Spain. One was meant to shoot in the UK. One's meant to shoot in the Canary Islands. The stuff in the Czech Republic, that's where I'm uh, doing quarantine. We are kind of ahead of the curve a little bit. This country's done really well. So it could be one of the countries that kind of comes out of it earlier. When that is, I don't know. The government doesn't know either, but it doesn't really matter because everything's international. So, um, 
you know, I think, I think some of the local productions where it's just all Czech people, Czech crew and Czech actors, which are not the productions that, that I tend to work on. But I think those productions, they might be okay. They might be able to go back to work and that could be across the board. But, you know, it's, there's not that many productions like that anymore. We're all connected. You know, we're all working internationally. Even when they start allowing travel, when are the plane? You know, that's my problem now. Even if I wanted to, I'm American. If I wanted to go home, yeah, legally I'm allowed to because I have an American passport. How would I get there, you know? <laughs> exactly. It seems likely that at some point the quarantine measures are going to be reduced or the limitation is going to be reduced, but the pandemic will continue. But it feels to me like the people that will be most at risk will be actors. Do you think there's anything that can be done in regards to that? Well, one interesting thing is that a friend of mine, a producer who I'm working with, Chris Simon, you know him, he was at Fest this year. Um, he was saying that one of the film I'm working with him on is a period piece. But the, the, another film that he's working on is meant to be contemporary. And so he said, well, if it's meant to be contemporary, then how is that going to even change the, the plot of the film? And, the, you know, if it's meant to be taking place now, everybody's standing six feet away from everybody. So they might have to rewrite the film even, you know, like, I mean, I guess I'm hoping, we're all hoping that there's going to be this antibody test. In updating my book now, I'm doing this whole segment on intimacy in scenes. You know, as you say, like actors sometimes have to kiss each other. That's, you know, because my book is meant to be post Me Too. Well, what about post COVID virus? You know, it's like a whole different thing. I'm probably going to have to rewrite it again. Could be that maybe the writers will just have to stop writing in so many love scenes. It'll be like the old days where they, you know, you have Cary Grant and whoever kissing and then they cut to Niagara Falls. What film? There was that Hitchcock film. I can't remember which one. Yeah. <laughs> but before they could show anything on screen, they just, they just cut to Ni Niagara Falls. Oh, that means they're doing it. It's curious that you mentioned the Me Too movement. Was there a significant shift? Or was it just a superficial uh, reaction? Uh, no, I think that uh, there were very significant um, progress made in uh, the Me Too movement. And um, one of the things is guidelines, best practice guidelines. Now, what hasn't happened yet is there isn't anything in Europe Europe wide. And that's always the case because we always have this thing in Europe about like, we're all kind of in contact, but we're all different countries with different governments and we don't do things the same way. But what we're working on right now at the, at the international casting directors network is establishing best practice guidelines as well, suggesting the use of intimacy coordinators. So an intimacy coordinator is somebody who like a stunt coordinator blocks out and choreographs the love scene. And that protects men and women, not just women. Um, so yeah, those are very significant things and I don't think those things are going away. Do you think that uh, the situation will uh, affect in any way the type of films that get made from now? Um, so yeah, no, I mean, I'm sure that there, were, there are going to be tons of movies about this. But do you think like uh, the bigger studios will uh, perhaps be even more afraid of taking big risks on giant productions and perhaps think of uh, going back to previous models? of uh, doing mid-budget films? You know, the thing that I fear that I hope isn't true, my life is all predicated on international cast. You know, that's what I do. I cast actors internationally. I don't know if the traveling business is going to totally come back or how quickly it will, let's say. It's not like all of a sudden one day it's like, okay, we're turning everything back on and all the airlines come back. Like some of them won't. And will that drive up the cost of flights? I mean, a lot of the work that, that I do is predicated on, you know, uh, taking advantage of cheap flights. So if there's no longer cheap flights, does that mean we only just have to shoot like in one place? But yeah, I, I think we'll learn a lot about different ways to present things. I think that will happen. And we'll learn things about ourselves and about our own creativity. Okay, well, it's good to see that you're generally quite optimistic about <laughs> this moment. I'm glad that I could convey <laughs> that. I'm a good faker. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Just keep safe and uh, hopefully see you soon.